Good evening. This is All India Radio. I am Anuja Kumar with the news at 9. The headlines Government makes RT-PCR test mandatory for international passengers from six countries including China. CBI conducts searches across the country in fraudulent registration of foreign medical graduates. Indian Air Force successfully test fires extended range version of BrahMos air launched missile. Srinagar in JNK witnesses first snowfall of the season. Srinagar Leh Highway and Mughal Road closed for vehicular traffic. And in cricket, Indian squad announced for upcoming tri series and ICC Women's T20 World Cup in South Africa. And now the news in detail. International passengers traveling to India from China, Hong Kong, Japan, South Korea, Singapore and Thailand will be mandatorily required to undergo RT-PCR test before their departure from these countries. The passengers have to upload the COVID negative RT-PCR test report on the Air Suvidha portal from the 1st of January 2023. The Union Health Ministry said the test should have been conducted within 72 hours of undertaking the journey to India. This requirement is in addition to the random 2% tests of all international passengers in all incoming international flights on their arrival to India irrespective of the port of departure. The US has also imposed mandatory COVID testing for visitors from China after Beijing announced it would reopen borders next week. Italy, Japan, Taiwan and India have also announced mandatory tests but Australia and UK said there were no new rules for travelers from China. Union Health Minister Dr. Mansukh Mandavia today reviewed the status of essential medicines and drugs with pharma companies so that India is equipped to effectively handle any situation. This review meeting was taken in view of the spike in COVID-19 cases in some countries. He said India's pharmaceutical industry is robust, resilient and responsive. During the meeting the pharma companies expressed confidence that they will be able to manage the supply chain of covid drugs 150000 health and wellness centers have been operationalized across the country union health minister dr mansukh mandavia termed it a milestone in the journey of antyodaya the minister said with this people living in far flung areas will also be able to get facilities like various types of testing and teleconsultation National Health Authority NHA has released a beta version of the lightweight robust and Ayushman Bharat digital mission compliant hospital management information system. It envisions providing a digital platform for healthcare providers, particularly focusing on private clinics and small health facilities. The government has launched the ambitious Ayushman Bharat mission to cover over 10 crore poor and vulnerable families for secondary and tertiary care hospitalization as part of a year end series dr arish sharma chief executive officer national health authority will be sharing key aspects of ayushman bharat digital mission in an interview with all india radio we have already crossed 30 crores 300 million aba accounts have been created thus far we have already linked about more than 5 crore health records with these aba numbers by the end of march 2023 we propose to have 50 crore aava number created and we want 100 crores records to be linked to these health accounts this interview can be heard on fm gold channel from 9:30 pm onwards tonight the central bureau of investigation has conducted searches today in different states and union territories in a case related to alleged irregularities in the registration of foreign medical graduates with medical councils on fake certificates the agency said the searches were conducted at around 91 locations at the premises of certain medical councils as well as foreign medical graduates this led to the recovery of several incriminating documents including fake pass certificates from the foreign medical graduates examination it has been alleged that as many as 73 foreign medical graduates who failed to qualify for the mandatory qualifying examination managed to get themselves registered with medical councils in several states indian air force today successfully fired the extended range version of brahmos air launched missile 
against a ship target from a Sukhoi 30 MKI aircraft. The missile achieved the desired mission objectives in the Bay of Bengal region. Our correspondent reports that with this, IAF has achieved a significant capability boost to carry out precision strikes from Sukhoi 30 MKI aircraft against land and sea targets over very long ranges. The External Affairs Ministry today said Indian Embassy in Doha is actively pursuing the matter of eight Indians having been arrested in Qatar. Briefing media in New Delhi, Ministry spokesperson Narendra Bagchi said the embassy is trying to facilitate visas of the family members of those arrested. We are seized of the matter. Our embassy is actively pursuing this case. I understand family members who are in Doha have been able to go there and we are trying to facilitate those who are here to go. The update that I have is that today we got our second consular access. Our embassy officials were able to meet the detainees and ascertain their well-being and of course we will continue to extend all possible consular assistance in this case. On Uzbekistan's claim of 18 children's death after allegedly consuming Indian made syrup, Mr. Bakhti said legal action has been initiated by the Uzbekistan authorities against certain individuals. In reply to a query on the Russian tourists' death case in Odisha, the spokesperson said Odisha police are investigating it as per the Indian laws. On the threat of attack on the Indian High Commissioner in Maldives, the spokesperson noted that the Maldives government has taken swift action. Union Minister Dr. Jitendra Singh said the National Research Development Corporation, NRDC, will undertake technology commercialization for benefit of startups from the 1st of January next year. The minister presided over a meeting with the Secretary, DSIR, and senior officials of NRDC at the CSIR Center in New Delhi. Dr. Singh informed that NRDC has concluded more than 5,000 license agreements representing technologies in almost all industry sectors, besides facilitating the filing of over 2,000 patents in India. This is All India Radio giving you the news. For quick news updates round the clock, follow us on our Twitter handle at AIR News Alerts. Welcome back. Prime Minister Narendra Modi will lay the foundation stone and dedicate projects worth over 7,800 crore rupees to the nation in West Bengal tomorrow. During the visit, the Prime Minister will chair the second meeting of the National Ganga Council in Kolkata. Home Minister Amit Shah has said that if the potential of union territories is fully harnessed, India will be able to achieve the goal of becoming the third largest economy in the world. He emphasized making union territories a role model for the country. Mr. Shah said this while chairing the conference of union territories in New Delhi today. He said all union territories should come together and work synergistically on a common platform to achieve the national objectives. Home Minister Amit Shah has said that the security of the border can be ensured only when the border villages are populated. He said along with the deployment of javans on the borders, Only the patriotic citizens living in the village can provide permanent security. Mr. Shah said this while launching the mobile app Prahari and the manual of Border Security Force in New Delhi today. The Home Minister said that the Modi government takes care of the family of the Javans with the same vigil with which BSF Javans protect the country at the border. He said the BSF Prahari app is a great example of proactive governance. Mr. Shah said, now the Javans can get personal information and information related to accommodation, Ayushman CAPF and leaves on their mobiles. The External Affairs Minister Dr. S. Jay Shankar reiterated India's position on the Cyprus issue and expressed commitment to a bi-communal, bi-zonal federation based on UN resolutions as a solution to the issue. He had a meeting with Minister of Foreign Affairs, Ioannis Kesulaidis, this evening. In the joint press statement following the talks and exchange of agreements, Dr. Jay Shankar said, Today's meeting demonstrates the commitment towards deepening bilateral cooperation between India and Cyprus. He said the India-Cyprus partnership is rooted in shared values of democracy, diversity and pluralism. He added that the strategic aspects of the relationship have gained new meaning in recent years. The Republic of India reiterates its commitment for a bicommunal, bizonal federation based on UN resolutions 
as the solution to the Cyprus issue. We have had very productive discussions on our bilateral relations, on our multilateral cooperation, on geopolitical and regional challenges. So we exchange views on our respective neighborhoods, on the Indo-Pacific, on the Middle East or West Asia as we call it, on Europe, on India-EU relations. External Affairs Minister Dr. S.J. Shankar is on an official visit to Cyprus and Austria from today till the 3rd of next month. In the second leg of his visit to Austria, Dr. Jay Shankar will meet the Austrian Federal Minister for European and International Affairs, Alexander Schallenberg. According to the External Affairs Ministry, this will be the first External Affairs Minister level visit from India to Austria in the last 27 years. India-Australia Economic and Cooperation Trade Agreement, ECTA, has come into force today. The agreement will provide duty-free access to a number of Indian goods across different sectors in Australia, benefiting the Indian manufacturing industries and also creating 10 lakh jobs. Besides, over 1 lakh Indian students will also benefit from post-study work visa. Addressing the press conference today in Mumbai, Union Minister for Industry and Commerce Piyush Goel said it's a win-win situation where India will get cheaper raw materials and will get 100% access of duty-free market in Australia in the next few years. While India will get nearly 100% access to the Australian market duty-free, of which nearly 98% plus of our value of trade today will get zero duty from today which is probably 10, 12, 15 items, where we will get the zero duty in over the next five years. He said the Indian IT sector will start saving billion dollars. From 1st of April, double taxation for our IT sector will be over and we will save millions and millions of dollars right now. And with the increased potential for our IT sector, my guess is we will start saving over a billion dollars every year. Nivedita, AIR News, Mumbai. Prime Minister Narendra Modi has expressed confidence that the India-Australia Economic Cooperation and Trade Agreement will unlock the enormous potential of trade and economic ties between the two countries. In a tweet, he said, this will boost businesses on both sides. Mr. Modi said, it is a watershed moment for India-Australia Comprehensive Strategic Partnership. In a tweet, Australian Prime Minister Anthony Albanese said the Australia-India trade agreement will deliver new opportunities to Australian businesses. He said that he would visit India in March with a business delegation at the invitation of Prime Minister Modi. The National Testing Agency has announced to conduct the UGC NET December 2022 exam from the 21st of February to 10th March 2023. It will conduct UGC NET December 2022 for Junior Research Fellowship and eligibility for Assistant Professor in 83 subjects in computer-based test mode. The interested and eligible candidates may fill the forms from today to the 17th of January 2023 up to 5 p.m. Candidates can fill the submission form at the official website ugc.nta.nic.in. The 356th birth anniversary of Sri Guru Gobind Singh Ji Maharaj is being celebrated across the country today with religious fervor and gaiety. Prime Minister Narendra Modi paid tribute to Sri Guru Gobind Singh Ji and recalled his contribution towards serving humanity. In a tweet, Mr. Modi said his unparalleled courage will continue to motivate people for years to come. The main function of the birth anniversary will be celebrated at midnight at the Gurudwara Takht Sri Harimandir Sahib at Patna Sahib, the birthplace of the 10th Sikh Guru. Most parts of Kashmir Valley today received light to moderate snowfall, the season's first, bringing an end to the prolonged dry spell. And now, before we end the bulletin, the headlines once again. Government makes RT-PCR test mandatory for international passengers from six countries, including China. CBI conducts searches across the country in fraudulent registration of foreign medical graduates. Indian Air Force successfully test fires extended range version of BrahMos A-launched missile. Srinagar in JNK witnesses first snowfall of the season. Srinagar Leh Highway and Mughal Road close for vehicular traffic. And in cricket, Indian squad announced for upcoming Tri-Series and ICC Women's T20 World Cup in South Africa. That is all in the news at 9. Good night.